Made some more moves after trading Justin Fields, signing some key free agent depth, and they brought in an offensive lineman and an edge rusher in order to help create a strong rotation and more pieces for this team. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde, and as always, thank you for tuning in. We have some exciting news to share with you guys. We signed offensive lineman Jake Curran and edge rusher Byron Coart from the New England Patriots slash Texans and the Seattle Seahawks. Super good signings, in my opinion. Super excited to go into them for you guys. But hope you guys are having a great Monday. It was one of those Mondays where I felt like it just dragged on and kept going and going and going. But excited to finally be home. I don't know if anyone was on the Metro today, but everything out of Ogilvy was delayed over an hour. So I just got home. It's been a long day. Recorded today's video that I posted earlier, I recorded at 4.30 in the morning for you guys. So definitely want to make sure I get you guys some more news, and I'm probably going to go to bed soon here. But we're going to go over these two signings for you guys. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. Mike, nice to see you before we get things started. Chicago 9, I see you too. It's tough. You know, I'm I'm not happy about the field thing either, but we move on. It's an exciting time to be a Bears fan, and we're going to continue to move forward. Thank you also for the nice haircut. Appreciate it. Guys, please make sure to also hit the like button on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. We're going to bring you all Bears breaking news as soon as we can, and right now we are here and here for a good time. Let's see how everyone is doing. These are all depth completion signings. Absolutely. I'm with you on Chicago 9. I'll take it sometimes. Absolutely, guys. But thanks for tuning in. Now, let's go into the players that we just brought in. I'm going to start with Jake Curran because offensive line has been a huge issue and a huge concern for this team for a long time. And honestly, Jake Curran, pretty good pickup. 6'6", 316 pounds. He's only 26 years old, so he could be on this team for a while if he ends up working out. But overall, three-year guy in the league. He started nine games for the Seahawks, also has played in 29 games. I see this as a signing from the Seahawks, like we've been doing, bringing in guys who know Shane Waldron's offense. Could be not only a good player to have in regards to knowing the offense, but he does have a pretty good track record too. He's played in over, again, 29 games, started nine of them, only has one penalty. Um, overall, just Pretty strong player, good depth piece. I like him a lot. He knows the offense. He's going to help the linemen get up to speed on how, you know, different scenes work and all that kind of stuff. So overall, a very good overall piece to have. On top of it, let's go into Byron Coart real quick. 6'3", 300 pounds. So actually, he can play more of the interior. He started 14 games in 2020 for the Patriots, took a year off, went back to the Houston Texans last year where he had a pretty he's, – he's a good defensive lineman, guys. Played in 36 games, 14 starts, only has one career sack, but he is an absolute run stuffer. He has 41 total tackles in three seasons. Uh, he has 19 of them being solo, 22 assists, what defensive linemen usually have. He has seven tackles for loss. He has five quarterback hits in his career, and he has a pass deflection as well. So overall – so. Right now, so let's go back real quick. I'll start because we just had over 100 people jump in real quick. So overall, Jay Curran is our new offensive line depth. He is not a starter by any means, guys. He is a 6'6", 315-pound offensive tackle who last played for the Seattle Seahawks in Shane Waldron's offense, and he's only 26 years old. We signed him to a one-year contract. That number has not been disclosed yet. But overall, he has played in 29 games in his NFL career. He has nine career starts, so he does have starting experience. He did start in four games last year for the Seahawks and wasn't a bad player. He definitely had a lot of good opportunities, and he only has one penalty in his entire career. And that penalty was a holding penalty back in 2021. So he has not had a penalty in a very long time. Uh, I think it's a good signing. I think it's a good depth piece. This team needs it. And that's what you build the next man up, right? And the Bears didn't have a lot of that this past year. You bring him in. He brings that for you. And overall, a good one-year signing. Who said he's going to be on the roster for a long time? No one did. But he's a good piece to have on this team. Very excited about it. 
Now it's going to Byron Cohort, the new defensive lineman that has come onto the team. He has a lot more experience and actually really did a good job for the Patriots in 2020, took a year off and came back and played for the Houston Texans last year. Uh, in 2020, he played in 14 games, started all of them for the Patriots with one pass deflection, one sack, 27 combined tackles, 14 of them being solo, three tackles for loss, and three quarterback hits. Not a bad pickup, I think, with the Indianapolis Colts in 2022. He played in all 17 games, had 12 total tackles, uh, four tackles for loss. Not a bad situation either, but he didn't really get a lot of playing time. But with the playing time he had, he was pretty effective. Um, so let's go into uh, Cohort's uh, Texans stats, which he played for the last year. Uh, I think he's a good, I mean, like, will he make the roster? Probably a practice squad guy, but we don't exactly know where he's going to be at the moment, but he not, not a bad signing. It's a one-year deal. He's probably, he's going to fight for a roster spot. He was a fifth round pick back in 2019 and overall, not, not a bad player, a really good depth piece. I think he'd be good to fill in behind, you know, Billings, Dexter senior Pickens, all those guys. So overall excited about it, but we move on. There's going to be new. There's going to be a lot of new players brought in over the next couple of years, uh, or over the next couple of weeks. Sorry, not years. Again, guys, long day at work today. Um, but he's a good player. They, they bring a lot of depth to this team. And Greg, what are we talking about? Really, we're talking about the players that we just signed. Uh, that's who we're going to be talking about. Um, but overall, uh, what's up, Fr? Nice to see you. Uh, I'm not giving someone in the chat any sort of. You know what? Actually, see ya. Bye. Um, but hey, what's up, Antonio? <laughs> uh, guys, this wasn't meant to be a Justin Fields group chat by any means. Uh, we're not talking about Fields today. He is with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We got a six round pick for him. And we continue to move on. We don't know who our next quarterback is going to be. Some crazy things are going to happen over the next couple of weeks here. But overall, um, oh, we got some questions. And we're here to take questions, guys. Like, you know, I'll go over the signings again in a little bit. We've had some people log in. Again, if you haven't already, before we continue, please hit that like button to help more Bears fans join in on the chat right now. Uh, excited to see you guys all. I know that it's been a long couple of days for Bears fans, but we are going to continue to move on. We are going to continue to make this team better. I still trust Ryan Poles. He's done a lot of good things for this team this past season. And if we do go out and get Caleb Williams, guys, he's walking into one of the best situations and number one has ever walked into before. Two Pro Bowl wide receivers, uh, two very good tight ends, a new offensive line, a new play caller that he is going to be fresh in this system. So pretty excited overall for what the moves that the Bears are doing. And these two guys that we signed today we're very good players. I'll get into that in a little bit. Thanks for everyone that's just tuning in right now. We just got another couple of people uh, going to take questions as well. So really excited about it. Uh, Chicago, I'm I'm going to be visiting Chicago during the draft. Uh, yes, please come to our draft party. And if you guys are just tuning in before we go back into these two players, uh, we are having an NFL draft party. Would love for you guys to come. It's going to be at Rizzo's Bar and Inn outside of uh, Wrigley Field. There's a Cubs game before, so you can go to the Cubs game before and then come by after. But we're going to have a live stream. We're going to have some current players uh, hopefully coming. We're, they're agreed to right now. Depending on their schedule, they will be there. But we're super excited about overall just this party. All ticket don all ticket proceeds go to a nonprofit in the Chicagoland area to help first-generation college students out. I was a part of it. They mean a lot to me. So would love for you guys to come and join. Um, the link is pinned in the live chat. <clears throat> so please come come by, come join. Drink specials, food specials, you name it. It's going to be a huge party. There's going to be other Bears podcasters there. Um, so you guys are going to have a good time. And I can't wait to meet all you guys. You know, I really support all, this, all the things that you do to come and, you know, support the channel. Like there's 200 people in here right now. And I couldn't appreciate that more from you guys. So, uh, really excited for what has to move forward for this team. We're going to have a really good time. Hope to see you guys there. Uh, Antonio, we can't move forward unless we stop looking in the rear view mirror. I couldn't agree more. Justin Fields is no longer a part of the Chicago bears. He made some great memories. I have four of his jerseys in my closet right now, but don't burn them guys. You know, I saw the video of the guy calling and yelling at the bears facility <laughs> and it's, it's on my Twitter. Go check it out. I was like, man, we're down bad right now, but we're going to continue to move forward. And I'm excited for the next quarterback for this team because great things are coming for this team. We are going to be a really good team this year, no matter who our quarterback is to, you know, be excited about it. Oh, Greg, no worries, man. Sorry. I thought it was a directed at me. 
Uh, I inspired you to get a haircut today. Thanks. So, Brandon, why do you think? What do you think about Brian from the Patriots and Colts? His highlights. He's a beast. Yes. So let's go into um, let's go into Byron right now. Byron Cowart. Uh, he is only 27 years old, 6'3", 300 pound defensive lineman, uh, was drafted in the fifth round by the Patriots in 2019. He brings really good run stuffing to this team. He gets to the backfield. He creates a lot of pressure, but he's a death beef guys. He is there that there's not much more to that. He's going to be a strong player for this team. Uh, he's going to be fighting for a roster spot though. There is no guaranteed for him. He's a one-year contract. It's, the breakdown hasn't been released yet about how much we're paying him, but a cap casualty. Eaton, you know, I wish him the best. I'm excited for him. Maybe we'll try to get him on the show. Uh, I've already reached out to his party. So uh, if we get him to come on, you guys will get to know a little bit more about him. But overall, a strong piece for this team. He brings a good run stopping ability. He's a big defensive lineman. He's athletic too. That's what Poles is obviously looking for. Let's see if I can find his RAS score. Um, let's see. Ah, so we do have his. So he has a 6.41. He went to Auburn. Not bad, but his broad jump is really high up. His overall, his athletic ability is good. His weight was a little bit low, but he's gained some weight since. He has a okay size according to RAS. He had 26 benches. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Uh, runs a 5.040 time. Not bad, uh, but really strong player. Really good at getting to the backfield, and will be a good pairing with Andrew Billings and the rest of the squad. So don't expect him to be a starter. He's going to be fighting for a roster spot. Overall, really good. Um, let's go into a little bit more about Jay Curran real quick. Cause now we have over 250 people here. Jay Curran is six, six, 316 pound offensive lineman from the Seattle Seahawks, uh, knows Waldron's offense. So super excited about that. He actually started four games last year for the Seahawks and he only has one penalty his entire NFL career. And that's a holding penalty. So he's a, he doesn't get penalized a lot. That's something that the bears have dealt with for a couple of years. He's a good run blocking, uh, offensive tackle. So he could be on swing packages, but overall, very good player. Uh, young, fast, big, strong. Who knows if he'll make the roster? But a, a lot of these guys can go to the practice squad too, and practice squad players make pretty good money. So <laughs> just putting that out there. <laughs> uh, Jay Sanders, I'm not answering that comment. Sorry, man. Um, but thanks for tuning in, White House. Huge fan. Uh, huge fan of all you guys tuning in too. <laughs> I know better. After like... <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. But and I already did, Mike. I already booted him. No worries. That I finally had the opportunity. He's been coming to a lot of shows. Uh, I'm burning my my joke. Don't burn your Fields jerseys, guys. Seriously. Uh, I spell my name N-I-C. Um, but you guys can spell it N-I-C-K. I don't care. I know it's a little unique. But overall, um, you know, guys, th these were good moves. They were good depth moves overall to help the team get to the next level. Uh, in order because championship teams are built also through the people that you have in the entire roster. It's not just the starters. Uh, it's not just, you know, that it is the starters a lot, but it's also the guys behind them who can step up. And Curran definitely has stepped up for the Seahawks, but also his ability to come in, help show the team exactly how to run the Seattle offense that's coming to Chicago, which is now the Chicago offense, but a really good player. Um, I like it a lot. He's a young guy. Who knows? He could be a, turn out to be a really good player and we end up keeping him for a while. I'm uh, going to go back to the comment section real quick. Guys, let's go Bears. If, if you guys are in the live chat right now, let's get a bear down. Let's get a let's go Bears. You know, let's get the positivity going. This team is continuing to move forward. It's gotten better. Let's hear it in the live chat from you guys. Love, love hearing from all of you. Um, let's let's hear. We got a little bit of run right here. Is it possible that we trade the number one to get some capital and take Jaden Daniels? Anything is possible in this upcoming draft, guys. Anything is possible. You, know, you guys know me. I'm going to be doing my trade backs. I actually have a trade back video dropping tomorrow morning, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, but you know, really good, really good opportunity for the bears here. They only have four picks at the moment, but you have to consider that three of our picks are Montez sweat, Ryan Bates and Keenan Allen. So four sure players that are going to be on this team. Good players too. Overall, really excited about it. Um, let's see. So, Rich, he's Nick. Uh, I spell it N I C. Um, I got some. Oh, so Bo Nix is an opportunity too. I don't think Bo Nix will end up coming to the Bears. Uh, I do like him. His stats don't lie, but he's a really good player. I'm going to answer some live chat a little bit more here, guys. If you're just tuning in, thanks for tuning in this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde. Pleasure to hear from you guys as always. Excited to be with you. Nothing, nothing makes me happier than tuning on and talking to you guys. Um, so overall, Bo Nix, I don't think will come to the Chicago Bears. I think he's a great athlete. If he comes to the Bears, Bears went to his pro day. 
Just putting that out there. So there is the opportunity that Bo Nix does come to the Bears. I don't think he will. I think we're either going to go with Caleb Williams at number one or we're going to trade back and get a guy like Jane Daniels or Drake May. Uh, but who who knows what we're going to do right now? Um, let's see. We are not drafting a center this year. Uh, Muck Muck, uh, the general, I, I don't know if we are going to take a center or not this year. Ryan Bates is on the team. Uh, we got Coleman Shelton, who was a starter last year for the Rams. So we do have that center position in a good spot right now. We have guys that can do it, but I would love if the Bears do end up trading back, getting some more picks, and going out and getting a center. Uh, Jake Curran is not a center. He is actually a offensive tackle, a good one. Uh, and everyone that's tuning in right now, I will get to that in a little bit. We got some to bears. Bless. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, oh, man. Thanks for the super chat. Appreciate it. Just want to support the channel. Love the bears. Appreciate it. Bonix is a legend. We got some bears down, guys. Keep those bears down coming. Uh, it, it definitely helps overall with, uh, you know, getting the positivity. If you guys are upset with this bears team right now, Take away the Justin Fields situation. I know it's tough, but we are going to move on. It's the reality that we're facing. But look at all we've done over the last couple of years. The Bears are so much better than they were two years ago. This team is going to continue to grow and become better, and I'm really, really excited about it. Um, Mr. Fancy Pants, is Iberfus the worst coach in the division? Serious question. I don't think so. I think that Flus is building a culture. He was put into a tough position at the moment um, when he got here, but he has built a good overall culture. You, some of the guys that have come on like Jalen Jones and Josh Blackwell and Justin Jones, those guys came on, they've talked about flus. They've talked about what he's brought to the team and people want to come and play for him. He's a very respected coach around the league right now. And he's, you know, he's working with other guys. He's becoming better. Again, he's never been a head coach before, but he's really turned things around. He went four and two in his last six games and he's doing the right things. They kept him for a reason. Polls kept him for a reason. And, you know, pace got rid of, uh, John Fox, after two years, we could have gotten rid of Eber Flus and brought in a different head coach like Harbaugh or someone like that. But who knows if Harbaugh wanted to come here? But Flus is a part of the, the future for this team. I think he is a good coach. I think he is doing the right things. He's building things right. Oh, Keek, I see you, man. I'm going to get to you in a second. Um, overall, this team is going – is not. he's not the worst coach in the division, in my opinion. I think that – the NFC North is a tough division, guys. When the worst team wins seven games, you're in a tough division. The fact that the Bears were the worst team winning seven games is pretty impressive, to say all the least. Everything happens for a reason. This team is going to go to great places. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you haven't already, please hit the like button on this video. Let's get some more Bears fans in here. Let's get over 300 people in here and keep throwing a bear down in there. Uh, Tito, thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Out of the big three-and-a-half wide receiver, who do you think the Bears can get? Uh, I really like Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU. Big body, 6'4", 220 pounds, runs a 4.46, 40 time, really good hands, good vision. Another big body wide receiver that can learn behind Keenan Allen if we don't get a Marvin Harrison Jr. or a Roma Dunze. Uh, I like Malik Neighbors, but and now that we have Keenan Allen, I would mind taking uh, Malik Neighbors, to be honest with you guys. like We just need a big body wide receiver. Uh, Equinamia St. Brown probably won't be on the roster next year because of the fact that we brought in Keenan Allen, who is a big body wide receiver who can block, but wouldn't mind Equinamia St. Brown coming back. We also brought back Dante Pettis, who will be a kick returner slash putt returner. So overall, just really good stuff here. Um, title. Let's see what we got. Um, uh, there's a 0% chance that the bears do not take killed as for nine. I'll be eyeballing Seattle 16 and two third round picks. You know, that's not a bad one either. Uh, I'm doing a couple trade backs with the number nine tomorrow morning, guys. So if uh, if you could, please tune into that. It's dropping at 9.30 a.m. Central Time. So excited to bring that for you guys. Uh, we got over 300 people now. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, really appreciate always your guys' support. Uh, Sunny777, let's get into these depth moves. Excited about the whole roster. Okay, let's get into the depth moves. I know there's a lot more questions, and I'll get to them in a little bit because that's what the live chat's for. So let's go over the guys again. So let's start with Jake Curran, the, the newest signing that happened about 20 minutes ago. Um, so Jake Curran is a 6'6", 316-pound offensive lineman from the Seattle Seahawks. He's been in the league for three years. He's an undrafted rookie free agent. He was, he is 26, literally just turned 26 years old. So a young guy. He's played in 29 games, started nine of them, four of them coming last year with the Seahawks, where he actually started down the stretch while the Seahawks were super hot. So a really good player to bring in. He also knows the offense that's coming in with offensive coordinator Shane Waldron. So really good player to have on your team to help bring the offensive lineman up to speed. A one-year contract. It's a rental, guys. But he could turn out to be a really good player. 
Um, I like him a lot. I like his size. I like his athletic build. Let's go into his RAS real quick before we go back to Byron Howard. So uh, let's go into, yes. All right. So we got the RAS right here for you guys. Um, Please excuse my delay here. Oh, they don't have it. Oh, they do. So not very good. He has a two. Um, but Ryan Poles obviously sees something in him that makes him more valuable to this team. And I think it's really because he knows this offense. He knows where offensive linemen are supposed to go. He knows what they're supposed to do. And that's why I think he's a really good pickup for the, the Chicago Bears to have. We ne- we don't have an offensive lineman that knows this offense besides um, Shane uh, or Coleman, Coleman, whatever, uh, Coleman, Coleman Shelton. Sorry. Blanking there. Again, long day at work, guys. Uh, Coleman Shelton knows his offensive scheme as well, so he's going to be an impact too. Better to have two than one that know how to get these offensive linemen up to speed. And then on top of it, we just brought in a guy earlier. Unfortunately, I couldn't cover it while I was at work. But Byron uh, Cohort, 6'3", 300 pounds, 27 years old, literally about to turn 28. So if you guys are on Twitter, make sure to wish him a happy birthday in a couple days here. Uh, But he's played in 14 games. He started 14 games for the New England Patriots back in 2020, where he had a pretty good year. As a defensive lineman, he had 27 total tackles, one sack, um, 13 quarterback or three quarterback hits and three tackles for loss. So a good player to have along with a pass deflection. He's a big body up the middle. He's a run stuffer. Good player to have on your team. Um, So these signings are key to winning teams because, you know, you have to have an X man up. Everyone on the team matters. We have a good coaching staff to develop these guys. Maybe Eric Washington had a little bit to do with bringing in co, uh, uh, cohort. So overall another, another strong signing, uh, 350 people. Wow, guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you put your comments in the comment section, uh, in the live chat. I'm going to start answering them right now. Uh, but quickly, if you haven't already put a bear down in the, the live chat, guys, Jerry, I see you bear down. Excuse me, guys. Just had dinner. Uh, Chipotle. Uh, very good. Not that's not a sponsor. Um, who's the wide receiver you target in the draft when we draft Caleb? I kind of went into this, Mike, real quick. I'm not sure if you already saw that. Um, okay, Ghost of Chuda Tribe, dude. You gotta go, man. <laughs> like you gotta go. You you need to get a hobby, man. Um, so Mike kind of already said it. Would like Brian Thomas Jr., um, Roma Dunze, Malik Neighbors. Uh, I don't think, I mean, even Brendan Rice, his number one wide receiver at USC would be great for this team. Uh, just good old, good old chemistry right there uh, to bring in. But who knows if we're taking Caleb still? I, I don't know. I, I've seen that comment a lot. I'm getting to them all right now, guys. But yeah, would be would be nice to bring in uh, someone that knows Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams knows them. But he's walking into such a good situation, guys. No matter who the quarterback is, walking into a great situation. Keith, thanks for tuning in, man. What would you do with the number one overall pick? You guys know me. Draft value is huge. Uh, I would trade back, but I also wouldn't be mad about Caleb Williams. I, I think that uh, overall this team is in such a good position. We can't take a quarterback, but this team is like ready to win now. We have a good coaching staff. We have a good roster. This team is ready to win now, and I think you guys can all agree with me on that. Like That's something I'm looking truly forward to. Um, no matter what, Tom, polls I trust, absolutely. Guys, answering the comments right now, so I'll get back to the players in a minute. Uh, please put these in the chat. I'm going to do, after I go through it, uh, we're going to go through just the chat for a little bit. Um, so Mac Daddy, J.J. McCarthy faced three of the top five defenses and completed 8% passes, where he faced two of the top 10 defenses and only completed 60. Uh, I think they're different divisions. He played in the Pac-12 versus the Big Ten, which is a little bit different. But at the same time, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, I wouldn't mind J.J. McCarthy either, but I wouldn't use the number one overall pick on him. That's if we trade back a lot and maybe even trade back the nine a few picks and then go out and get him, and then he'd be the starter. But, you know, this situation kind of stinks because I would love for a quarterback to sit behind a veteran. I'm not saying Tyson Bajan is a, is the veteran to sit behind, guys. But overall, I, I do truly believe in the system where a quarterback sits behind a veteran for a little bit in order to learn the NFL and learn the speed. Um, Daniel, I see your comment. For the ninth pick, would you want to see the Bears taking an edge, offensive lineman, or whiteout? That's a good question. You know, here's the thing is that a lot of people say Braxton Jones is okay. He's medium. He's fine. He gets by. I don't want a left. I'm tired of this. We're okay. We're good. We're good with what we have. I want an elite left tackle for whoever our quarterback is. That's what I want for the Chicago Bears. And if that's Olu Fushanu, I I think Joel Alt's going to be gone in the top five. But if Olu Fushanu came to the Bears, like I wouldn't be upset about it. You know, maybe trade Braxton Jones. He, I, if Braxton Jones is our left tackle, he's progressed. 
Herb Howard we had on a couple weeks ago said the Bears are very high on him, which is great. I totally understand that. But I want our quarterback to have the best left tackle possible. Uh, Andrew, I see you. Bo Nix, Bo Nix, Bo Nix. Um, there is a there was a whole Facebook group founded by Justin Field fanboys. Now they have been shown in the whole league. He's not good. They will shut down the group. Scott, I don't know that, Scott. But, um, you know, a lot of people are upset about Fields leaving, and I wish him nothing but the best. He's going to do great things. But overall, really good stuff. Brian, bear down from Minnesota. Ron, bear down. Bless Bob needs to take us to the <laughs> NC championship, no excuses. Uh, let's see. Do you think the Bears will win the division this upcoming year? I think that it's going to be a good division race this year. If the Bears make the wild card, I wouldn't be mad about it. But this team is built much longer out than other teams, let's say. I think the Bears are young. They got a lot of guys under contract. We have a ton of good cap next year. We have our leaders signed. We have our, we have our pillars. So overall, I think this team is in a really good position right now in order to make a run at the division. But the Lions are a tough team to beat. I think we can beat the Vikings. I think that they still are a team that we can definitely go out and beat. Uh, the Packers, I think that we we expose them. We almost beat them in Week 17 to knock them out of the playoffs. We're, we're coming. We're coming for the NFC North, and I think all you guys can agree on that. And if you guys agree, put a bear down in the live chat or like the video. It, it, liking the video helps a ton, guys, too. I really appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. It's crazy. I lost 190 subscribers after the field news. And a lot of you guys came back and commented on back. Like, I know it's an emotional time, guys. Um, but I, I really, I, I, I'm with you. You guys saw the live chat where, you know, I was drinking a little bit earlier in the day and I was red in the face and upset, but overall, I think we can all agree. Fuck green Bay. Right. I, I just want to hear that in the chat too. Um, but I think they can make a good shot at the division. Uh, Richard Bo Nix is the man. Maybe, maybe he is the guy moving forward. James, uh, you like these depth moves. Everyone that's tuning in, I will go into the depth moves again in a little bit. I appreciate you guys all tuning in, taking your time to join us at just another year, Chicago bears. Um, let's see what other, we, we got another chat. I see you guys coming in right now. Uh, Caleb is overrated. We don't know. I mean, like he is, he's a Heisman trophy winner. He's a good player. And if he comes to the bears, he, he's in a, one of the best systems. Like that, you can't ask for anything better than what we're offering our next quarterback. Um, let's keep going. Gerald Everett is going to wear number 14. <laughs> no one can replace the goat, Nathan Peterman. Yes, I agree. Uh, but an exciting time, uh, bear down, Randy. I appreciate it guys. Seriously. All the bear downs are, it's truly awesome. Shy solo. Um, we got another question guys. Uh, keep them coming. I love answering your guys question. We're going to be here for a couple of, at least another 15, 20 minutes. So please make sure you put those in. Uh, do you think that, uh, a Caleb Williams will be Karen Rogers 2.0 causing the locker room problems? I, I don't know this, this locker room guys, is so close and interconnected. There's no drama. I mean, I I've asked the guys and they love each, like, this is a brother. This is a brotherhood in that, in there. Um, I really think that this team is going to do great things. I, if Caleb does come in and cause some problems, he's going to get smacked around. They're going to put him in his place right away. And polls is going to consider that too. The big thing for Iberfus and Foles was building a culture and that's what they're doing. Um, so overall, I, I don't, if he even tries, it's going to get smacked around. Shy Solo, bear down. Frank V, bear down. Uh, I'm excited to see. So, Tom, I'm excited to see a 12 personnel and that glad Tanyan is gone. I wish Tanyan the best. He played for his hometown team, the Chicago Bears, but, you know, it didn't work out at the end of the day, and, and that's okay. You know, I wish him the best. You always wish best for these guys. These are humans at the end of the day, and, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, they don't perform to our expectations, but overall, you know, it is what it is. Uh, MCB calling in from Europe. Bear down, my man. I appreciate it. Uh, Mike, hit that like it while you're here. Yes, absolutely appreciate you guys hitting that like button. We got some more bears down. He's going to throw them on the screen. Thanks, Chris. Uh, thanks, Sylvester. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, no, Sammy, you're fine with Brendan Rice at 75. Me too. Really, really appreciate it. Oh, my God. This guy just will not leave this chat. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Another good pickup, Xavier Legat would absolutely be a great pickup for this team. Um, so, guys, let's go into – and um, good evening, everyone. Charles, great to see you. Let's go into the depth pieces. That's what a lot of you guys are here for, right? And a lot of people are new, so let's make sure that we go into them for you guys. Jake Curran, and guys, I appreciate you sticking around, hearing it for like the third time, but I want to make sure everyone knows about these free agents we just picked up. Both these guys are on a one-year contract, so we went and got offensive tackle Jake Curran, and then we got defensive lineman Byron uh, Cowart. So both one-year contracts, could they make the roster? 
who knows? Uh, but they're on one-year contracts. Both of them have NFL playing and starting experience, both solid depth pieces. So it's going to Jake Curran for 6'6", 316 pounds, big dude. Hope he's on my side all the time. Played for the Seattle Seahawks last year, just turned 26 years old. Happy birthday, Jake, if you're listening. Um, he's been in the league for three years, played in 29 games, started nine of them, started the last four of the season where Seattle was making a playoff push. Uh, and he knows this offense well. He's going to help offensive linemen get up to speed. And then on top of it too, he's only had one penalty in his entire career. So not a penalty machine, good player to have. Uh, he did get a, t- <laughs> did get a two RAS score. Uh, I saw that <laughs> comment in a couple where, but Paul sees something in this guy. And if it's to teach this offense, great. Another depth piece, a big depth piece, a young depth piece. Um, let's go into Byron Cohort real quick. Defensive lineman, 6'3", 300 pounds, about to turn 28 years old. Fifth round pick in 2019 for the Patriots. Uh, started 14 games in 2020 with the Patriots with 27 tackles and one sack. Three tackles for loss and three quarterback hits. So he gets pressure on the backfield. He's a run stopper too. Overall, a really strong player to have on your roster. He played for the Texans last year. Got some good playing time. He's also played for the Colts for a year. So Matt Eberflus knows him as well. Um, a good guy to just have as a depth piece, maybe teach the guys a few things, maybe a practice squad guy, but overall just a strong signing overall. Um, let's go, let's go back to the chat real quick for you guys. Um, so Greg B's, uh, spot track it will, is still updating the cap after the pool money set along for rookies. Bears have about 8 million left this upcoming off season. So they can still make some moves. I don't think they're gonna be splash moves guys, but they're going to be good moves. Jordan. Thanks for putting a bear down in there. Thank you for everyone uh, for putting in bear down. I really, really appreciate it. Um, a lot of so-called Bears fans have followed Justin to the Steelers. Good for them. You know, let them, let them cheer him on. Uh, my mom is adopted from Pittsburgh. So Pittsburgh's actually my second favorite team. And shout out to my man, Dylan. Uh, that's his number one team. So if I'm not rooting for the Bears, I am rooting for the Steelers. So it kind of was nice for me. But again, guys, we traded fields to a team he wanted to go to. Poles did the right thing, trading him to a team that he asked for. And overall, you know, I thought it was a classy move at the end of the day. Clearly, Fields wasn't a part of the picture anymore. But you know what? He's going to be behind Russell Wilson for one year, and he could be the starter for Pittsburgh next year. I wish him nothing but the best, and that's what everyone should do too. You guys know I'm a Justin Fields guy, but I'm a Bears fan at the end of the day. And no matter who our quarterback is, I'm cheering on, and I hope you guys do too. Uh, Brett Johnson, thanks for the super chat. I'm going to answer your question right now. Can we possibly drop from nine and get a wide receiver and the best available player on D? What do you do? Um, I do think we still should get an edge because Montez Sweat is on a four-year extension. So I would like to see a rookie on a four-year contract also play alongside him, learn a few things. Sweat after his contract will be 30 years old. So, you know, he still might have some gas left in the tank. I mean, look how the guy's built. He's built like a tank. Um, excuse me. Um, but overall, I, I you know, a solid... I, li- I like Dallas Turner. Jared Verse would be absolutely unbelievable. Chop Robinson. But if we're going to go in that direction, they're available. Trade back a few picks. Get some more picks in this draft. This draft is loaded with talent, guys. Really excited about it. And I like what the Bears are doing with these signings, too. They're adding good depth talent in order to build this roster. Um, let's keep going down. Let's keep going down. Wow, wow. Family friendly. Come on, Nick. <laughs> yeah, fuck Green Bay, guys. I- I'll say it. I'll say it. Sorry. Sorry, Chicago 9. Go Bears, bear down, everybody. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Hello, Rob. Nice to see you. Nice to see you guys. Um, Let's keep going. Do you think Caleb Williams will win Rookie of the Year? Depends on how he does. If he can do what he did at USC last year, absolutely he can win Rookie of the Year. If he leads his team to the playoffs, absolutely. Because a quarterback coming into Chicago and having success right away, yes, he did have a good team put in front of him. But the fact that he's able to do something for a franchise that hasn't had a quarterback for a while – I think that would factor into his rookie of the year on top of his stats, but we'll see who does really well. There's going to be a lot of competition for that uh, rookie of the year. Um, What do you think about what RG three said today? Um, I'm still thinking about it. I'll put it in tomorrow's video. That's all I'm going to (laughs) say, but overall, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Respect for RG three, but you know, everyone's saying what everyone's on their mind. Everyone had a different opinion on the fields. Williams situation. Bears fans are fighting amongst each other. The media is mighty fighting amongst each other. So overall, Antonio, how much negative, how much of the negative press on Caleb do you feel is manufactured? I think a lot of it. I think that a lot of it has been brought on by bears fans ourselves and other teams jealous that we'll get Caleb Williams or, you know, we're afraid of a bust. I think that's what bears fans are mostly concerned about guys is that he's going to be a bust because you know, we are, if we do really use that number one pick, like I, I can't even remember who was the last bears number one overall pick. 
Bears number one overall p- picks. Um, Tom Harmon in 1941 and Bob Femimore in 1947. Wow. Wow. Um, that's it's interesting. So we haven't had that for a while. And I think what the Bears fans want is we want a for sure thing. And that's what we're all nervous about. So I think that yes, there is some manufactured negative press, but I would like to see what he does. And I really wish he, I hate this no combine thing. I hate that players don't do that. Everyone used to perform at the combine to perform in all front of 32 teams. And that's who you get to see who can handle the pressure of seeing every team in your potential career, your potential draft position, your legacy could be changed because of how you perform at the combine. Um, so I really want to see that Santana. Thank you for tuning in. Fuck Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers. I will support any player coming to Chicago. That is what I'm saying, guys. Any player that comes to this team, we will support them. Besides Cody Parkey, right? Except Cody Parkey. Never going to forgive him for what he did. All right. Let's see. Um, if you guys want me to go through the players again, please let me know. Uh, I'm looking through the comments right now. Do, do, do. All right. Let's see. We got some questions. Most people in the chat just bought Steeler jerseys. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's get down. Uh, I've been a little bit behind. Joseph R., thanks for tuning in. As always, bear down. Bear down with your pants down. I love it. I love it. Hey, Nick, what's your Twitter handle? Um, you can follow us at official J Shy or uh, I'm Chicago Nick, Chicago NIC. You guys can follow me there. I'm tweeting all the time. So overall, um, super excited about just what's next. Um, Eight million left, say 30. Okay, appreciate that, guys. All right. Wow, you guys are really active today. I really appreciate all your support tuning into the channel. It's a huge, um, huge help to the channel. And we got 300 people in here. I, I can't believe it, guys. Like, you guys mean the world to me, and this is why I do this all the time. So I really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, oh, we got the Bears Cub in here. What's up, man? I do believe if Ryan Poles does see, uh, does not see what we all see in 13, he will move on from one down to two or even to three and choose Shaden Daniels. Then he could possibly move our nine to 13. Wouldn't mind it. I, I I really I wouldn't mind it. I think that it would be a strong move by the Bears, but also if we do get Caleb Williams, I'm excited about it. But there's so many quarterbacks in this draft, guys. It's kind of like when we did take Mitch, and there was Mahomes and Watson and all those guys. It's an exciting time to be a Bears fan, to say the least. Um, do do do. All right, guys, let's just uh, stop uh, replying to the trolls. How about that? All right, um, let's get to 300 likes. Run it. I would love it, guys. Really appreciate all your support. All right, so I'm at the bottom of everything, and I think I got to all the super chats. Appreciate you guys sending those. Really, really appreciate it. Keep throwing your comments out there. Uh, Bear Down from Indiana. Really appreciate it. Um, so all of a sudden, Fields' future is more important than the other 52 players collectively. Um, you know, I, Brad, I don't, I don't think that's the case here. I think we all just we wanted the best for Justin. He was put in a really bad position. Um, but I, th- I think he's going to do great things, and I'm excited for what happens to the Bears. I'm not excited... I'm excited for what Fields does, but I'm more excited for what the Bears have to do. And if you guys agree with me, I want to hear it. Um, but overall, super excited about it. Wow, more people have just joined. We're at 350 again, so I can't. Let, let's go through these players again, huh? We'll go through it one more time. Uh, I'll answer a couple more live chats, and then I'm going to call tonight and have some dinner with my girlfriend. Um, so the first, the most recent sign we had, Jake Curran, 6'6", 300. And 16-pound offensive tackle from the Seattle Seahawks, just turned 26 years old, 29 games, nine starts, one penalty in his entire career of over 800 offensive starting snaps. He has played in a total of 29 games. He is a good swing tackle, not a penalty machine, great hands, good feet, had a low RAS score, but proved wrong in the NFL. No shame, Waldron's offense will help the offensive linemen get up to speed here in order to understand Waldron's offense, and I think that is what's key. We also have uh, our new center, um, our new center, a part of the Chicago Bears. Um, we have we we signed Coleman Shelton to a one year contract, who also knows his offense really well. So. Really excited about that. And then we brought in Byron Kohler, a 6'3", 300-pound defensive lineman who's been a little bit all over the league, but he was a former fifth-round pick for the Patriots. Uh, His best year ever was in 2020 where he started 14 games for the Patriots with one sack, 27 combined tackles, three tackles for loss, three quarterback hits, and one pass deflection. So overall, a good depth signing. These are depth signing guys. These are not starters. But that's where a lot of this is going to be moving forward till the draft. So we're not probably going to make a splash anymore this offseason if we do. 
great. I would love it. Uh, Poles definitely has some tricks up his sleeve. So these two players definitely bring that to this team and really excited about it. And thanks for everyone for tuning in for this entire 40 minutes. Really appreciate your guys' support. Um, I'm only going to answer a few more questions here for everybody. Wow, this guy just will not stop. You guys know who I'm talking about. Um, bear down, bear down, bear down, bear down. Yep, 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 yep. Um, oh, thanks, Michael Hyde, for tuning in. Clearly a Seahawks fan. Karam was all right. Nothing bad, but nothing good. Uh, I would rather have that as a depth piece than, you know, Dakota Dozer, who we brought a couple years ago. You guys remember that name? Um, but overall, let's see. Any more live chat or not live chats? We don't, you guys don't have to do live chat. But <laughs> I forget Coleman's name often. LOL. Yeah. Cliff, thanks for tuning in, by the way. I know that you watch uh, the guys over at Bears County Podcast, our country podcast. I really appreciate you uh, coming over and watching me as well. Uh, I love those guys over there. Shorty's my guy. Uh, hopefully, we're going to do something soon here. But overall, guys, really like these signings, really like what Poles is doing. I still trust Ryan Poles. I really do. I think he's doing a great thing for this team. I think this team is going to continue to get better, and I'm excited for the future of this franchise. Um, and talking about Michael uh, Jake Curran again real quick, good depth piece. He held his own last year. Thanks, Michael, for tuning in. I really appreciate you giving that insight from a Seahawks fan's perspective. Obviously good for the Chicago Bears. But looking for one more question, guys. It can be about me. Oh, Joseph R., look at him flying in right there. Do you think there's any chance that Poles may use any of these guys? He just signed them. He just signed during the trade with other teams. I think he will use them as depth pieces. I think he will use them to get these offenses and defenses up to speed. Uh, but will they play? Probably not too much. And again, Michael, appreciate you tuning in. Really appreciate it, guys. And if you haven't already, guys, before you guys leave today, if you please could hit that subscribe button. Uh, helps out the channel tremendously, along with that like button so more Bears fans see this video. But always great catching up with you guys. Love hearing from you. Super excited for what's next. Tomorrow's video is going to be a number nine trade back. You guys are not going to want to miss. I'm excited to make it for you guys. Script is already ready, about to record after this. Grind doesn't stop for you guys because I want you guys to have the best Bears information possible and you all make it possible. So thank you for tuning in this episode of Just Another Year Chicago Bears. My name is Nick Rohde. Everyone have a great night. It's, the, it's Monday. We got through it. We're getting to the week and things are happening fast. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde, and as always, bear down, baby.